Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. Today, a treat special. We're going to make a little bit of progress on the Camaro today, hopefully. We'll see if we can get the roof cut out of the floor. Panel bonded and spot welded. Let's cut the floor. Yes, last cutter. As I walk across the shop to go put on some different jeans and a shop coat, because I don't want to get covered in grease. Camaro looks clean, but the underside has not been cleaned. So now we have a half of a bajillion spot welds to draw. My favorite method, center pumps, pilot kit, spot weld kit. Well, it kind of looks like a disaster zone, but definitely driver's side inner rocker getting replaced. Passenger side looks a lot better though. With most of the floor pan cut out, it was now time for the third reiteration of media blasting. But before we sent it back to Tim for some DIY blast, we decided to build a rotisserie. This is a design that we kind of came up with years ago for Mats 57. It uses just locally available tubing and some other gusset materials um, and then some hard wheels to move the thing around. Nothing super complicated, but it's pretty economical to create really. So what we do is just take some square tubing and make this T design that you see here and then take some supports and weld them at 45 degree angles off of the main upright post to give it some side to side stability and keep the whole thing together. And once we have those pieces welded on, then we weld a small piece of tube on the top of it. Um, I think the tube diameter is about three inches. And then another smaller piece of tube, say like two and three quarter inch or two and a half, I don't remember exactly the dimensions, slides inside of that. So it's a telescoping apparatus that you're actually building. And then off of that, there's another T-shape, some drop downs and some perches which of course are dimensionally specific to the vehicle that you're building it for. So this isn't necessarily like a universal rotisserie, so definitely get some good measurements off your car before you attempt it. And then to link the two sides together, there's another piece of pipe welded perpendicular to the, those are the ones that go at the top of the rotisserie to pivot the car on that I'm welding there. But on the bottom, there's a long piece of tube that leaks the two sides of the rotisserie together. And that helps give the whole rotisserie definitely some more torsional rigidity. The other side is really just a mirror of the first side, so go ahead and build it to the exact same dimensions that the first one's built. And here I am just making it together with mild steel wire, nothing super crazy, and this is really an excellent cost-effective option to build a rotisserie, especially if you can find the materials close by uh, your location without having to ship them. Uh, it really helps save some money there. And uh, yeah, so just make sure that your dimensions of the rotisserie are accurate for your car. On this specific one, we're picking up underneath the tail panel and then underneath the cowl area. So you wanna find somewhere where the, like close to the center of mass of the car so the thing's not super top heavy and it rotates easily. And then as far as rotation locks go, all we do is just drill a hole through the outside piece of tube that bolts onto that upper T and then weld a nut around the perimeter of that hole and then thread a bolt through the nut, which then goes through the hole and clamps down onto the inner piece of pipe. So we have a couple of those per side and that really just locks it in place nice. You just use a big old crescent wrench and tighten them down. I think I use like a half inch bolt on each one. They're pretty big. Anyway, that's the homebrew rotisserie and follow at your discretion, but it's what we used and it worked out pretty well actually. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. There it is. Back from the second bout of blasting. 
Here we go. The thing is, it's it's sandblasted. Just need the unwrap. But look at that. Now, no more rust. The rockers on this are galvanized from the factory. But yet, it's still rusted. I mean, really, at the end of the day, all that we have left that we're going to reuse on this car, uh, the eight pillars, probably reuse these. Eight pillars, yep, probably reuse those. Um, rockers, got a new floor pan, which is right there. And toe plate, replace. Firewall, yep, that's going. Cows, oh crap, it's the whole car. Just kidding. Yeah, that's getting replaced. That's getting replaced. Uh, that's been replaced. This has been replaced. Mm, that's been replaced. That has also been replaced. That's been replaced. That's been replaced. These have been replaced. The underside structure has been replaced. So, yeah. Oh wait, those have been replaced. There's a lot of replacement going on in this car. So yeah, it should be pretty cool when it's done, but geez, what a lot of work. Next up, it was time to pull the body off the rotisserie so we could put it back on the body cart and get to work. Now that the body's back from being sandblasted by my dad, it was time to pull the body back off the rotisserie and put it onto the new body cart. The body cart will allow us to continue the metal work and install the new floor pan into the car. Before the floor pan can go back into the car, Aaron's going to remove the inner rocker panel and replace it with a new section. First, he has to make a cut to cut the rocker panel out and section in the new piece. Replacement of the entire firewall was necessary due to the extent of the rust present in the tow board and firewall areas of the Camaro. 
This was achieved by Levi completely removing the entire front section of the car and the old firewall off the car.